Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. There are a few piece of, pieces of information that I've seen in the news today. I kind of covered this earlier today. This is um, from AMB Crypto. Uh, Ripple CTO David Schwartz defends XRP after cracking statements. And this is about the the person that controls the Kraken account, I'm assuming is a, is a Bitcoin maximalist type guy, which I don't know if it's the people that run the company or what. But very irresponsible. I, I was making the point this morning that these guys are, uh, I've never seen people that run companies that are so willing to alienate a, a huge portion of their customer base or potential customer base. But these, this is some new paradigm we're in because when I was growing up, the customer was always, customer was always right. But here, these guys let their arrogance override any kind of customer philosophy. And so this is about as dumb as it gets, but let them, let them hang themselves. I don't understand what in the world they're thinking here. Um, Ripple, what, what they say here, and they're, they're intentionally saying Ripple instead of XRP because they know that's the one thing that'll anger XRP holders is they're calling XRP Ripple. So Ripple is the only one example of blockchain which has had... Ripple is only one example of a blockchain which has had problems. And this is in response to the Ethereum Classic thing. <laughs> um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Zcash, you name it, have all had their share of problems. And the irony of what he's saying here is Ripple's the one that hasn't had any problems. But he names it first like it was the first one to have problems. Um, this is what markets are for. People disagree and can invest accordingly. Deplatforming is not the answer. So when, when there's a these 51% attacks and and money's being stolen, that's not the time to deplatform anybody, of course. And then um, the comment was called out by, da by David Schwartz. It's irresponsible with the, when exchanges misrepresent digital assets in this way. Ripple's a private company different from XRP or the XRP ledger. They're not interchangeable and there's no disputing it. And then um, Dr. T came in and he said, thank you for calling for public accountability, that Twitter account has been acting unprofessionally for a long time. It's now clear Jesse was controlling the handle. I don't know if Jesse's the CEO. I can't remember what the CEO of Kraken's name is. But, I mean, here's a guy. I mean, whoever it is is irrelevant. The point is someone that represents Kraken is making it very clear that, hey, whatever, XRP community, we don't really care what you think. So, that uh, don't uh, don't forget this one because th this is, these are the kind of things... These are the kind of things that customers never forget, which is so stupid about what they're doing. Oh, well, um, moving along. And also, here's someone else. And I want to make the point in, in this video, kind of the theme of this video, is that when you're on top and you're the greatest digital asset ever created, part of what goes with that is you're going to be attacked. And that's just... That's life when you're when you're number one, um, and so those of you that that don't uh, understand that, you should go ahead and go ahead and accept that. If you're going to be a part of the greatest digital asset ever created, there's a reason that all of these Bitcoin people and you name it, all the proof of work people hate XRP because it represents everything that they hate, and it's and it's done wonderfully despite what they say they said that it would never be used by banks as of yesterday it is used by banks everything that they've ever said has been proven not to be true because none of it was true they've never one thing you, there's a couple of things you'll never hear anybody say that's a bitcoin person or any of these proof of work you will never hear them say that their digital asset is faster than XRP or that their digital asset is cheaper than XRP or more scalable than XRP. And they'll never say it because they can't. The only thing you'll hear them say is things that, that you can't put your finger. Oh, well, that's a security. They've just declared so. Oh, that's a security. 
and therefore that's a horrible and it's a banker's coin a scam coin but they but they can't go at it on the, on the merits of XRP versus their digital asset because it's the greatest digital asset ever created and they know it that's what all of this is about this is eToro's Maddie Greenspan XRP community may be negative for its adoption in other words because we're the largest community, because it's the greatest digital asset ever created, otherwise it wouldn't be the largest community. Because it's the largest community, and because the community members are passionate about that and don't take don't take stuff off of people that are trying to misre misrepresent what Ripple and XRP are, um, that's a bad thing now. Uh, Matty Greenspan could only wish that whatever his community is, I don't know if he's a Bitcoin guy or what, would be... Uh, anywhere close to what the XRP community is. But all you have to have for it to be that, it's real simple. You have to be the greatest digital asset ever created. And that is how you get the greatest community in digital assets. Simple, pretty simple concept, really. But here's what he says. XRP is not a security in my personal opinion. My best understanding is XRP is logically a utility token the SEC may see, see things differently. In other words, let's make sure we plant at least some seed of doubt, you know. The negative side to XRP's online community is aggressiveness. Floods of people are attempting to force banks to accept XRP. Now, I haven't met those people in the XRP community or how they go, they're go. they going about trying to force banks aggressively to um, accept XRP. That's one of the more ridiculous things I've ever heard. I mean, that's that's reaching. Um, and then he, he quotes uh, to the lifeboats down here, <laughs> Sam, I am, or ripple me this is what he says, as saying, I describe this opportunity as the opportunity of several lifetimes. Those who recognize the opportunity and position themselves accordingly will be the next 1%. <laughs> and so this guy, obviously, I mean, he's this guy every other week, and maybe he's just doing it to tweak the XRP community so he can get traffic to his Twitter or to his to eToro I don't know he's the uh, senior market analyst at, at eToro um, not sure what his agenda is but he comes out just about every week trying to trying to get something going oh well um, now this is Weiss ratings now Weiss ratings has become my favorite place in the world because they they have been telling the truth they, they misfired when they first came out and ever about a month after that, it seems like they figured things out and these guys have been spouting the truth left and right ever since then. Coinbase suspended all tra transactions of ETC after detecting a potential attack, letting someone spend same coins twice. Heist resulted in loss of 1.1 million worth of ETC. This is why we have issues with most POW projects. Many have this vulnerability. It needs to be addressed. And, and Weiss, I'll tell you how it's going to be addressed. If, if some of you may remember, I believe Tron came out as an Ethereum token when it first came out. The way what what Tron did is they eventually came up with their own token, and they it, they did a one for one. So if you owned the Ethereum based token, then Tron became its own digital asset, and you got you were able to swap it one for one. And if you're Tron was on an exchange, it was automatically done. The same thing is going to be done with all these proof of work coins, in my opinion. They're going to all eventually realize we can't have this anymore, and they're going to move to something more like, I don't know what it'll be, proof of stake consensus, like XRP's consensus. If they're smart, they will go to something like that, and they'll do one-for-one -one swaps eventually. Watch. That's what's going to happen, because this is a disaster, and they know it's a disaster. Even even the creator of Ethereum, uh, Vitalik Buterin, has said that he doesn't like proof of work, and he created a proof of work coin, and wants to do proof of stake, or or already is working on it, one or the other. Um, okay, moving along. Now this I saw going around Twitter. This is interesting, and it's 100% right. I just walked. This is Catherine Wu. She says I just walked out of the Hong Kong SFC. That's their equivalent of the SEC office. And oh, uh, holy hell, was that a stark contrast to meetings with the U.S. SEC. The U.S. is going to be left so far behind in the new decade due to fragmented, archaic, and stringent regulations. 
Regulators worldwide share the same customer protection concerns, but it's the open-minded way they approach changing dynamics in tech, finance, etc. that is key. I am more convinced by the day that the next decade of innovation will flourish and happen outside of the United States. And she's right. I mean, it's sad, but she's right. What happens to, and this has happened to every great empire in the history of the world. Over time, they get too wealthy and they get too comfortable and eventually they get too bureaucratic and, and everything slows down to a crawl because nobody can move without the government bureaucracy um, taking forever to do anything. And so, yes, it's just a matter of time before this kind of thing happens. And it's unfortunate. I mean, I live in the U.S. It's unfortunate that that is, is where the United States is, but it is. Um, the best thing that could ever happen to the United States is start reducing the size of the government, period. Okay, moving along, and I want to tell you a little story. I, I have brought this, or this article really pissed me off. Uh, this is from December 23rd. Wall Street quietly shells its Bitcoin dreams. Goldman Sachs, Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and, more, and many more built it, but they didn't come. It's all over. Well, this is from December 23rd, and then yesterday I showed you this article. Bitcoin bulls are storming Wall Street's crypto trading desks, okay? I knew this wasn't true. They knew this wasn't true. You knew this wasn't true, but they, they put this article out anyway. And now I want to tell you why they put this article out. Last night, I'm, this is the story I wanted to tell you. Last night I was watching, I've, ta I've talked about this on this channel before, The Men Who Built America. It's a History Channel series. Now you can watch it on Amazon Prime for free, okay, if you're a Prime member, or you can just rent it. But or, or you may be, be able to access it through the History Channel on demand. I haven't looked. But I was, watch, I was watching one of the episodes last night, and, I, and I, I saw a part of it that so parallels what we've been going through with crypto, as well as being an XRP holder and, and XRP being the greatest digital asset ever created. You'll be able to identify with this. Um, this story is about J.P. Morgan. Thomas Edison and John Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller. Okay, um, and what happened was J.P. Morgan would go and invest in companies, and of course try to make a lot of money, which, which of course he did. Well, J.P. Morgan um, found out that Thomas Edison, who at the time was had been a great inventor from for some time, but at this time. And I don't know dates and all that, but you can go and watch it if you want to. But J.P. Morgan decides to invest in Thomas Edison's light bulb. And there's a scene in The Men Who Built America where it shows, and I didn't realize this, but J.P. Morgan had the first house that ever um, had lights and electrical lights in it. Thomas Edison literally wired his entire house for electricity, or at least parts of it. And there was a scene where they're having a dinner party and J.P. Morgan's J.P. Morgan's father is at the dinner party and and whispers into his ear that he that to J.P. Morgan he says, you've been had. This is just some gimmick. This the electricity is just some gimmick. These lights. The only place that this will ever be used is in a circus or something to that effect. And so J.P. Morgan did not listen to his father, luckily. And continues, and then he he continues to invest in Thomas Edison, and Thomas Edison goes and, and begins to build a power plant, and then probably several after that. But they began to build a power plant so that they could begin lighting several homes. And he already had all the wealthy people of the world, like the Vanderbilts, in line to have electricity in their homes and have lights in their homes. Well, meanwhile, John D. Rockefeller controlled the kerosene industry and the kerosene uh, John D. Rockefeller had made a fortune by lighting homes and streets with kerosene uh, lighting and so he recognized that these guys that Edison and J.P. Morgan were about to have electricity in all of the homes and they were adding it to all the homes <laughs> and he and he realized that at this time if he did not do something, then, then he was going to lose a fortune 
and wasn't going to be able to sell his kerosene to light homes anymore. And so what did he do? Rockefeller starts a PR campaign against electricity. And he talks in, in all of the ads and the, and the newspaper things and the, and the word that he got out was that electricity was dangerous. He also put out that it was deadly and he warned of mass electric, uh, electri electrocutions that could ha come as a result of electricity. Um, and he, he scared people saying that there would be out of control fires. It would all be, you know, death everywhere. Um, because he, he knew that if he could frighten the public, that kerosene would continue to be the dominant light source. Well, of course, he failed. But those of you that are listening to this, and especially those of you that have been in this crypto space for a while, especially the last year, you've seen all of this. You see it with articles like this. And if you, if you believe, if you don't believe that there are John D. Rockefeller types that are behind this kind of thing, then think again, because there are, we, now the invention we're dealing with is as big or bigger than electricity, because now we're talking about money. This is the internet of money, the internet of value. This is the trust net. This is where the middlemen are taken out. Okay, that is what we're talking about. This is bigger than electricity. And so, yes, you do have John D. Rockefellers behind the scenes. There are PR campaigns running right now. They, they ran all during 2018. All sorts of agendas going on behind the scenes. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family Digital assets are going to be bigger than electricity. Thank you for listening.